Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. I'm your host, Sal McCagliano, uh, Chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct professor of maritime industry and policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. So a lot going on this week regarding particularly the trans-Pacific trade, containers coming over from Europe to the west coast of the United States. So I thought we'd break down a series of stories that have come out over the past week and take a look at it and see what's going on because this is gonna impact you, the consumer, particularly in the United States over the next couple of months. So let's take a look at some of the stories that are here. This is Splash 247 story right here by Sam Chambers. New analysis shows the fierce fight between alliances for market share on the main east-west trades. So I have talked a lot to you all about the fact that container trade is dominated by these big ocean companies, these big carriers. And again, one of the things you've seen are, is this chart right here with the top 10 carriers control 85% of the world's container trade. And nine of these all except Zim. Zim is the new one that's out there. You see her right there about 1.7%. Uh, she is out there with just a small little percentage of it. And then the rest, the 14.9% is spread among other carriers. But the nine top carriers are in this alliance system. And this alliance system has undergone some great changes over the most recent years, particularly with the introduction of the ultra large container ships in 2015. If you look what happened in 2015, you had companies that were kind of aligned together in, in these kind of four groupings, Hanjin fell out, it was outside the alliance system, it fell out. And you have two or three main ones that exist. 2M, which is Maersk and Mediterranean Shipping Company, MSC, used to be Hamburg Sud in there, but now that's been sucked up by Maersk, even though it exists as a separate line, it's, it's really part of Maersk. You have uh, uh, the alliance, which uh, included uh, a batch of companies, HMM uh, being one of them, Hopog Lloyd, which also sucked up uh, United Arab Shipping Company, UASC. You got Yang Min in there. And then you have the three Japanese lines that all became part of ONE, NYK, MOL, and the K line. Then you come down here, you have the Ocean Alliance. Uh, that is CMA uh, CGM, which sucked up APL. You have Costco, which uh, the Chinese Overseas Shipping Company, which uh, consumed the Chinese shipping container line, CSCL. You got uh, Evergreen and then OCL, which in turn was again consumed by Costco. And so what you're seeing right here is, is these three big alliances, nine companies that control a, a massive share. And to come back to the story by Sam Chambers, one of the things he start talking about is the fact that we're seeing a fierce fight between the alliances for market share and the growth of non-alliance shipping, particularly to the West Coast. Now he's talking about this being at play on uh, uh, the Asia to Mediterranean route, the Asia to North Europe route, but we're definitely seeing it here on this level here. Matter of fact, here's this chart, which I'm gonna show you right here, that shows that. So here are your alliance systems, here's 2M, which uh, back in June of 2020, controlled roughly about 20% of the share. Uh, same thing with the Alliance controlling about 20% of the share and then the Ocean Alliance controlling about 38% of the share. And what you see is a decrease uh, in all three of these over time and the growth of this non-Alliance. So non-Alliance was at about 10%. This is container companies that are outside those nine companies control about 10%, but now it's up to about 25%. So that's about a 15% jump, obviously. But I think there's a, there's a couple of things missing here under the surface. I want to break this down for you. This makes it sound great. Hey, there's competition. Uh, this is a story that the World Shipping Council representative for these shipping companies want to let you know. Hey, you know, it's not monopolies controlling the trade to the West Coast. It's being controlled. Uh, there's competition out there. Look at this non-alliance competition. Look at these non-alliance. It's gone by 15% while the big alliances have dropped. Yes and no. You got to be careful of how you read this. So a couple of backstories to put context here. Number one, we see the resumption of trade coming out of China. The Ningbo, the, the sixth terminal at Ningbo is opened back up and moving ships. Ships that have been on berth a long time, the Samson, the Rivoli, they're finally coming off berth 
and moving out. So we're starting to see that trade. Now, some lines have diverted around Ningbo, gone to other places, but we're seeing this happen. We're gonna see China do this time and time again, shut down periodically when they have these outbreaks, but they're doing everything they can to ensure that this does not happen. We're seeing this follow-up story from Sam Chambers, uh, Splash 247, more, more new entrants ready for booming Trans-Pacific. And particularly he's talking about uh, Xinjiang shipping and China United Lines getting in on this. So we're seeing smaller companies coming in and starting to provide service. These will exist until this cycle changes. Let me be clear. Uh, there's opportunity right now for young, small shipping lines to jump in in this trade because of the demand and get in there. But what's gonna happen when this trade slows down is the bigger container companies will cut rates and run these companies out of business. This is what we've seen happen. This is how 10 companies control 85%. We just saw this happen. So there's opportunities out there for these smaller lines, but again, gotta be careful. These are very small companies. Uh, and while they're providing some service, the question is, are they really jacking it up from 10% to 25%. Uh, the story that's in every news source, I just happened to grab Sam's here off Splash 247, California imports struggled to clear peak season boxes, braced for brutal September. Man, it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. I'm gonna show you the port of LA and Long Beach here in a second, uh, but we're, we're just seeing the parking lot form here off, and I'm gonna give you marine traffic that's gonna talk about this. Jump over to uh, a G Captain uh, a story. We had the G Captain story here before about the Ningbo port, but also the port of Los Angeles. More boxes leave empty than loaded. So uh, uh, the head of the uh, Los Angeles port did an interview with uh, Time uh, Magazine, Gene Soroka, and he talked about the, the biggest export leaving the United States from the port of Los Angeles air, empty boxes. That's the biggest thing leaving right now. We're exporting a heck of a lot of air, not a lot of goods. And I'll show you that a little bit more. The story here, which is a load store story, talks about this. But one of the things I wanna focus in on here is some stats and some information here. And then finally, this story appeared. The Port of Long Beach completes new 3.3 million TEU capacity container terminal. It's gonna put Long Beach up there being one of the top six ports in the United States in terms of container capacity. It's massive. Uh, a lot of electric vehicles that are being used there, automated vessels. Uh, this sounds great. It's like, man, look at this Long Beach responding to it. Just to be clear, this process has gone on for more than 10 years to get Long Beach to this point. 10 year process to get Long Beach to where it is. One point, almost $5 billion started in May of 2011. Uh, they just finished the final phase here. Uh, some great news stories on this showing all the technology that's out there. But it, it's really interesting to see. Uh, if you want the best kind of analysis of containers right now, again, uh, John McCowan does uh, his report, Top 10 U.S. Ports, does this monthly. He's over at Blue Alpha Capital. I follow him on LinkedIn where he posts this all the time. 14.3% gain for inbound container volume in July, and he breaks this down. Uh, in details. This is his chart going back to 2017. You can see, again, growth of containers, kind of dips there in 2018. You have that huge dip there in 2020, and then, man, through the roof in the 2021, just a huge, massive spikes taking place. Uh, John does the best work on this. I, 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 to me, this is the best available that you can just download without paying gazillion dollars for reports. And John does that, looks at the major ports in the United States, those top 10 ports, Los Angeles, New York, Long Beach, Savannah, Norfolk, Houston, Seattle, Tacoma, Charleston, and Oakland, and really breaks it down. Definitely worth it. And of course, I'll have the link in the show notes for you. So let's do go to marine traffic. Here are the ships at anchor and in the port of Los Angeles, Long Beach. So you can see the anchorage filling up here off the port. Zoom in here to the facilities right here. So this is the dividing line roughly right here. Uh, LA is over here. This is Long Beach over here. They literally kind of split right down the middle, not exactly, but close enough for us. So ships on berth down here, you'll see a batch room down here, a batch of MSC ships, CGM, President Kennedy from APL, MSC, Maersk Line right there. Up here, the uh, Everlunar, one of uh, Evergreen's uh, vessels, YM from Yangmin, 
Zim, C-SPAN, President Eisenhower, which is an APL ship under repair. This is the one that caught fire, still there. Uh, over here in the Long Beach Terminal, you'll see Cap San Juan, that's a Hamburg Sud. Uh, Maersk Lines, two Maersk Lines vessels. Uh, Matson, uh, Matson Oahu, which is a chartered vessel for Matson on their China line. Uh, Daniel K. Inoue, which is another Matson vessel right there. And then over here in the others, some uh, YM, Costco, MSC vessels. And then again, the Anchorage is just jammed. So a couple of things to, to make you aware of. So right here, this is the uh, data from the Port of Los Angeles. You can go directly to the Port of Los Angeles and get their data. But if you start looking at 2021, loaded inbound 382,000 containers, loaded outbound 109,000 containers, empties inbound 15,000, empties outbound 276,000. Look how many loaded inbound versus how many empties outbound are going for 2021. Uh, this is an issue. We are not getting our exports into those containers. The carriers are prioritizing empties because they want to roll them around faster. This is the study that's going on by the FMC. This is the proposed legislation by uh, John Garibendi, the Democrat from uh, California, and Dusty Johnson, Republican of, of South Dakota, that they're trying to amend this. Same thing in Long, uh, of, uh, same thing that we have is Long Beach right there. This is Los Angeles right here. You can see it even more. 469,000 loaded imports, 91,000 loaded exports, total empties, 300 and almost 330,000. Uh, containers. I'm not sure how they do the decimal points here on containers. I'm not exactly sure what their measurement is. They're doing MTU, so obviously uh, uh, there's some measurements here in containers, but uh, uh, so uh, th that's what they're doing. They have their annual statistics here. You can just see the growth of what's been going on over the years. You know, go back to 1980, there's no numbers. 1990, 2.1 million, 2000, 4.9. 2010, 7.8, and then last year, 9.2. You'll remember there was a uh, report about 10 million containers. That's in uh, physical year, not calendar year. But this is the one I want to show you. So this is from Long Beach. This is Long Beach right here. And it's showing the vessels on berth. I just showed you that in marine traffic, but I want to show you this. This shows their vessels on berth right here. Uh, vessels that are currently there. Mats in Oahu, the, the Inoue, uh, Ukul's got a couple of ones. These are the uh, Oriental Overseas uh, Container Lines, YM, Yangmin, uh, MSC, Costco, One High, I forget, I think that's Chinese uh, uh, Container Ship Line, Costco, uh, uh, Maersk Vessels, and then uh, Hamburg Sud right there. Same thing, LA, here's the chart showing the LA vessels, who's on berth and what's on there. But this is what I want to show you. This is their route information. This is, this is Long Beach route. So this is their weekly ocean carrier services. Notice where it says what is covered here. You'll see down here, for example, the routes that are covered. So here you see MSC, you see Alliance, you'll see 2M plus other carriers. This is, this is basically, uh, uh, Zim is in there, Ocean Alliance, and then the independents. And remember, come back to this chart over here. There you go, non-alliance, independents. One of the things about independents are they're not running, they're not always a separate shipping line. Sometimes they're part of the Alliance system. They're just running routes that are not part of the Alliance system. So for example, up here, you know, here you have several of these independents. So Hamburg Sud, which is running a non-Alliance route, that's part of, uh, of, of Maersk lines. Pasha, Matson, those are U.S. shipping companies. They are definitely independent. They're not part of any of those alliance systems. They're small, dedicated service to Hawaii and other areas, Alaska, and then they do run a Chinese and Far East line. One High, which is not in any of the alliance, it's a true independence. But here you have Hamburg Lloyd, Hamburg Sud uh, running on this independent. They're part of an alliance system. And more importantly, if you come over here to the LA's, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see this a little better. These are their routes they're running. And again, you can see in here, these are the service, they hear the loop runs they're doing, these are the ports they're going to, these are the vessel sizes, terminals they're going into. That's Ocean Alliance, that's the Alliance, that's 2M, but then you come again into the independence. ONE is part of an Alliance. Again, come back over here, you know, ONE is is uh, right here, a part of the alliance. Uh, yet, 
those routes they're running right here are not part of the alliance and then therefore they're considered independent. Same thing with CMA, CGM. Uh, again, come back over here, CMA, CGM, part of the Ocean Alliance right there. Uh, same thing here, you'll see Marisk, you'll see uh, APL in there, you'll see them in there. Again, that's, it's kind of, I, I think, just a little inaccurate. And again, I don't have the exact information done by the agency that did this, that Sam's reporting on, Sea Intelligence. It's a very pricey <laughs> uh, detail to get that kind of raw data from them and their reports. But looking at it, I, I, I'm a little circumspect about this. I think this is part of the World Shipping Council really trying to make it say, hey, listen, the alliances are suffering right now. We're, 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 our business is down. We're not caring enough. It's these independents now that are coming up here. And I don't think that data is, is supported at all by this. And one of the things we're just seeing here is, is booming freight rates in the amount of volumes that are coming in. This is from the Port of Los Angeles. This is their signal data, which you're putting in, which are showing uh, expected uh, containers coming in. Look at that first week in September right there. Uh, just a massive increase coming in. Looking at ships at anchor, currently 26 ships at anchor. Average weight is 7.8 days. Container vessels do it anchor, got 11 coming in. And again, we're, we're looking at you know, current year versus previous year. You're seeing that, that data come in. So one of the things I think that's going on here, again, is, is an attempt by the shipping companies to kind of sit there and say, listen, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can. Uh, they're trying to damage control what's going on with efforts by Representative Garamendi and Johnson to get this Ocean Reform Act passed, kind of amend the Shipping Act of 1984, give the Federal Maritime Commission a little more say in, in what's going on. And again, this is the danger. I just did a video on the Merchant Marine Act of 1920. And one of the things I talk about in that video is how it is a maritime strategy for the United States. And it came about because in the beginning of World War I, most of our foreign exports was, well, the exports are all foreign, sorry for the redundancy there, but all of our exports were carried largely on foreign ships. And what happened when they refused to carry them or were diverted? Our economy suffered. And we're kind of seeing the same thing now. It's one of the reasons why I think we need a new maritime comprehensive strategy. You know, reform the Jones Act, don't repeal it, it needs to be changed. Uh, we, we don't need to just count on foreign flag vessels to handle our coastal shipping because we see how they handle our foreign shipping. Uh, again, go back to what Gene Soroka is talking about from LA. You know, the, the port of LA is, 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 is exporting more air than exports. So hope this video helps you understand what is going on with ocean shipping, specifically how it impacts uh, the United States. But I would argue too, this, this is the same for Europe, for Australia, for New Zealand, uh, for South America. In many cases, you're seeing the same exact thing. And I would actually see, say you're seeing it worse in some places, Australia, New Zealand, friends down uh, uh, the Southern hemisphere there, you're seeing it worse because one of the things they're doing is diverting vessels, these vessels here, these independent vessels, some of them off routes that provide service to you to feed into this. And again, uh, one of the things we got to look at is how these companies' profits are going. Again, I can show you news report after news report of record profits coming in in Q1, Q2 for all the major container lines right now. They, they are just reaping the profits right now, which is good. I mean, they, they, they've been getting by for a while. It's been hard since 2008. They're making their profits. But again, I, I, I don't think we should listen to, you know, woe is me. Our, our share is down and, and we're really competing to get space right now. They're, they're really not. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share across social media. Do whatever you need to to get this out. Let's uh, kind of uh, become the, uh, the go-to YouTube channel here for all about global maritime shipping. And until our next episode, this is Sal coming from your, my new office here at Campbell University. Uh, I will see you next time.